Hi, this is Terry Lee, and today we're going to make a Halloween book. If I can get it done before Halloween. This is the third time I've tried to video this, and I've had technical troubles and all kinds of troubles. And woe is me and too much information again. But anyway, that's why the cover's partially done, just as an explanation. All right, so to make this um, little book, you're going to need one junk journal kit, which is all these papers right here, and all, all of this ephemera here. <laughs> and this all comes with a junk journal kit called uh, Halloween by uh, Victoria Designs. So uh, when I give you the measurements, it's going to be for this particular kit. You're going to have to uh, make the measurements on your own kit if it's going to be something different than this one. Okay. Um, you're going to need cardboard for the covers. You're going to need some sort of a Tyvek tape, cloth tape, or other material to join the cover pieces together, the spine and the two sides. Um, just on a side note, I tried Tyvek paper. I glued it down and the paint looked really cool, but the glue, I used Fabrifix, but this is so shiny. It's not like putting just, you know, the tape has an adhesive side that it just peeled right off. So on a side note, you cannot use the Tyvek paper in place of Tyvek tape, if that's what you're thinking about using. Um, you're going to need book binding thread and a large needle. I've got black, came with my book binding kit, and I've got the big needles, so don't make me mad. I have big needles. And you're also going to need an awl, which is also very pointy, AWL, and it comes with a book binding tool. It's what you use to poke the holes in for when you sew the uh, uh, signatures in. Signatures are the groups of paper that you fold in half and then sew in to make a book. And um, you can use some other pointed device. You could actually use the biggest needle out of here. Um, and then I think mem we are memory keepers make some sort of a pokey tool. And I'm not sure if you can pokey tool it in far enough to do what we need to do. Um, you're gonna need black acrylic paint and a paintbrush. It is Halloween. And so we're gonna use my favorite uh, Apple Barrel black craft paint. You need a few eyelets. Um, we're going to make an op optional notebook to go with this. So you need two eyelets for that. And then one eyelet for this book, I'm going to uh, put some sort of a decoration. I haven't decided yet and I may not do it in the video, uh, but I am going to show you how to make the hole and put the eyelet in using my new crocodile and my eyelets. That's totally optional. That's why it's just a little decorational thing on here. And it's actually optional on the notebook as well. You can always just poke holes and run the next thing you need, which is the elastic cord. All right, and then you're also, last but not least, you're gonna need some uh, hand dyed paper. Um, Actually, this is optional too. You could just use the kit papers and put nothing else in it and just use the ephemera to decorate it and say, happy Halloween-y and uh, off you go. But uh, I made some purple papers um, and it's hard to see that they're purple on camera. Don't worry, it's not your eyes. Um, but I dried them in the dehydrator, which did very strange things to the paper, which actually worked really well for my Halloween uh, purposes because you have to lay them on a metal tray so I think that had something to do with it drying paper on metal doesn't does weird things sometimes okay so that's what you're gonna need now the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, making the cover and for this particular kit the cover piece this the cover is gonna be five and a half by eight and a quarter now, if you're not using this kit, when you, because uh, we're not going to talk about the signatures yet, so I'm not going to go into the double side print and blah, 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 all that. All you want to do is measure how wide your paper is going to be. Now, 
if you're printed it out please don't trim it yet but that's all I'm gonna say just um, measure how far this is and then divide it in half because you're gonna be folding them in half and then add about an eighth of an inch maybe a little bit more onto that and that will give you a nice little edge around the inside of your uh, cover when your book is finished okay so that's how you figure that out and then the height is the height plus a little bit so like I said on this particular kit it's five and a half by eight and a quarter okay then you're gonna take some cereal boxes or like in my case my uh, hungry man TV dinners yes I can eat a hungry man TV dinner even though that is the only thing I'll eat the whole day <laughs> if I eat one but I love them I don't know why um, anyway if it's something thin like that you're gonna need six pieces cut out at your five and a half by uh, eight and a quarter because you're going to have to glue them together it's hard to tell because this is already painted black and I didn't think to get out some other pieces but you'll need to glue you'll have to cut six pieces at eight five and a half by eight and a quarter and then you're going to glue three of them together and then glue three of them together um, to make the cover so that it's thick enough now um, you want to make sure that when you're done you end up with a cardboard side facing out on both sides so you know glue the shiny side to the shiny side and then on the last side you're going to have to glue the shiny side to the cardboard side that still gives you cardboard and cardboard I don't want to know what kind of TV dinner you ate by the time you get done painting now um, we're gonna have a one inch spine so that's gonna be eight and a quarter by um, one inch and you're gonna need three of those and glue those together wait for the glue to dry before you paint then we are going to paint them black and it's gonna take a couple of coats so um, I've only done one coat and that was when I realized that I was having video issues <laughs> and I had to stop and um, so that's why my covers are almost done and yours are not so we're gonna take a break here so that I can paint the second coat of black paint on here um, I'm not gonna make you watch paint dry and then we'll come back in just a second and we will uh, construct our cover hi everybody this is Terry and I don't know why I said hi everybody because this is actually a continuation in the same video so uh, hi everybody we're back um, I know it looks like I'm ahead of you and I am and the reason for that is we had another video glitch and I didn't catch it until I had already got this far on my cover which I think we left off last time painting the cover anyway so what I want to tell you show you is this is my cover and you'll notice that my cover is probably sturdier than your cover and what I did was I actually put a second piece of tape in here Ooh, glitter yay anyway um, and that made all the difference in the world of making it sturdier so um, you can still put a second piece of tape in on the inside just you know paint it black again um, and I highly recommend that you do it makes it much sturdier um, mine ended up a little close uh, I'm gonna have to open and close it a few more times um, but it makes it much 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 sturdier okay so now that we're done with this part what we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate the cover and I'll tell you what I did was I um, picked out these pictures uh, and of course they printed out now these are not the two that were together but they printed out like this on one page and I cut them apart and uh, for the inside and the outside covers um, for the I didn't really want it to say happy Halloween because I don't necessarily want mine to be like um, a happy Halloweeny book I want mine to be more of kind of a creepy book so I decided to use this image for the cover and then I'm going to use this image for the back and now even though we're going to be sewing in our signatures and I'm talk about that in a minute um, I decided that I'm going to put a picture on the spine so what I did was I cut a one inch wide image and this is off the edge 
of this image here that has the um, inside of a creepy house and I cut the side off because it had the spider webs and um, you can't really tell that's part of a stairwell it just kind of looks like columns so I'm going to glue that on there for the inside covers I've decided to use these two now I had printed on the back because they it was um, I think it was a page well it was from two different pages actually and um, these are the two sides that I'm using seeing it kind of looks like this and of course they'll be on the different covers but they are uh, the pattern is almost like a mirror image of each other so I liked that so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to pull up the old hand warmers. It's really cold here, even though I live in Seattle. Um, don't come stalking me now. Well, actually, you can if you want. I never have any excitement around here. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is tell you that I took um, Bundled Sage. Um, it's a Tim Holtz ink. And, uh, oh, I was going to put this little guy. Come here down here on the bottom and then I realized it just wasn't really enough um, and then he was going to get sewn through and then once the the stitching was here then you wouldn't see him at all so that that idea was next and then actually I thought okay I'll put this one here and then this one here it says number five like it's book number five and um, then I dumped both of those ideas and then that's when I came up with my full spine picture. So now we're going to, now that I've, um, all I did was knock the white off. And in fact, right here, it looks like I missed a spot so that it didn't seem white. And I didn't want to do black. We've got a black cover and I don't think black along the edge would have kind of highlighted it enough. And there's a enough kind of a greenish, turquoisey gray color especially around the cover that the uh, bundled sage which is like I think my new favorite color um, kind of uh, accentuated the best now remember you're gonna go past where your tape is but not past where your crease is you just want to go kind of close to that and then you're gonna have a little bit of the black show all the way around all right Actually, it looks like my cover might be a little too tall. I may trim a smidge off the bottom. Let me do that. Let me move everything out of the way here. And the side note that I was going to get to, that I guess I'll get to now, is that on your Fisker's cutter, which I know, paper trimmer, which I know a lot of you have, I bought. I thought, oh, look, $6.99. I can get two blades for $6.99 on Amazon. That's what I'm going to do. Well, they're the regular blades, and um, you're better off spending the $9 and getting the titanium blades. I had the titanium blades the first time, and they lasted a lot longer. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's, it's kind of fuzzy already. So I'm going to trim this just a smidge. I wonder if I should trim it at the top. I think I will. I think I'll trim it at the top a little bit. Just, just enough to make a little bit more of the black shell because it seemed like it was too close to the edge on one side. So now let me knock the, the white off of this. So we'll just have a little chat while I do that. So what I was going to tell what else I was going to tell you was on the signatures I decided that I was only going to do two and not three um, I just think three would be too much especially since we're going to add in I'm going to knock that fuzzy off of there I know I did this end already but I'm going to see if I can get some more of that off yeah that's better okay 
Um, I, I just thought since we're going to be adding some of our hand dyed paper in along with the uh, pre-made pages. Now you may find that you have enough room for three. I printed this out quite a while back and so I think I printed this out on 110 pound. I'm not sure that it's 67. So it's a little heavy uh, which would be great for the covers but for the uh, papers inside since I'm using a lot of the original papers and not very many of the um, the uh, other papers then um, uh, and by other papers I mean um, you know adding a bunch of different pages in I tried to use as many of the um, original papers as possible of course now that I'm only using um, two signatures I think I'm going to go back through and look and see which ones I'm going to use in them I just think that could use a little more glue I don't think it came out thick enough around there not that I needed more like more more like across the middle but just a little bit more in general around the edges okay <laughs> right side up would be good now actually until I put a picture on there is no right side up or upside down you have to put one picture on first now this matte paint kind of grabs the glue so you you don't want to have to smunch it around too much I think I'll slide it up just a little bit and if you don't commit to really sticking it down if you just do the edges this um, Fabrifix will give you a little bit of a wiggle room Oh, I like that. Do you guys like it? Looks like I have to touch up. It looks like I scratched it. Man, I think a Sharpie marker will fix that. And that's chalk mark. So I did that on purpose to see. I probably should have tested it somewhere else. But um, we're going to need to do something to mark where our signatures are going to go. And then I realized that we had a black cover so on second thought maybe maybe the spine should have been brown that would have been all right painted it would have looked like an old brown spine on a black book i think that would have been all right i'm wondering oh my dog has lost his mind there must be a dog outside the window and this is the one I used for the original notebook. If you remember when I showed you, because we're going to do an, you know what? I didn't check this one and I think this one needs to be trimmed a little bit too. Let's see. Yeah, actually it does. I'm going to take it back up and I'm going to wait for the glue to dry and I'm going to trim a little bit off the top. Just a little bit off the top, you know, like a haircut. So let me double check my spine. Because I can't flip this over and glue the inside ones on because the glue is wet. Yeah, the top and bottom is fine on that. I think the side to side is good. Let me see about folding it. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine look a piece that's fine <laughs> I'm on a roll and I can't believe I'm working on the semi clean side I have started painting on my other side I still regret painting over my quote-unquote abstract once I painted it white I thought oh no what have I done now this one being on the spine, I'm going to go ahead and smear it up pretty good with some ink. I mean ink. With some glue. I almost wish it was, you know, folded. There we go. I think that's right. 
I think I have like a very short amount of time to think whether it's right or not. I'm going to try to do this in two vi complete videos. Now you're going to obviously notice that we're starting and stopping. And um, yeah, I want to take it off the top. I think the glue is dry enough on the top to take off just a little bit. Um, it's so cold here right now. It's 27 degrees outside. Don't ask me how that happened. I have no idea. Anyway, I have this little space heater in here. It's a ceramic heater. And um, my dog, it's just, a, it's just a little bitty one. And my uh, dog loves sitting in front of it. He's just a little chowini. I'm sure I've mentioned that before or a hundred times. Anyway, he's only about 11 pounds. So he likes to sit in front of that thing until the front of his chest is so hot. I don't know how he can even stand it. And I keep accusing him of sucking up all the heat. Because he blocks up all the heat coming out. But, uh, yeah, I have a, I don't use the uh, heaters in my apartment. You know, the floor, the under the win window electric heater thingies. I don't trust them. I don't like them. They get too hot. And how are you supposed to put stuff against the wall? You know what I mean? Like your stereo or your TV or your couch or whatever with those baseboard electric heater thingies there. Well, I'm not super happy with that. I wish I had been over a little bit more. <sighs> Well, I like the spine, <laughs> and I like the cover. Okay, so I'm going to glue the insides on, and I may glue something on the spine on the inside. And um, But for now, you've obviously seen how to do that. See, that looks pretty good. I'm going to use that sage along there. It looks like I might have forgotten to do it, and now you can see the white. So I'm going to remember to do that bundled sage. I want to talk to you about the signatures and if you've never done one of these before, the I might have mentioned it, but the signature is the bundle of pages. And the if you look in a regular book, which of course I've murdered all mine, I don't have any regular books around that I can reach with the microphone on. Um, but if you, if you look straight down on a regular book, you'll notice that it's sewn in. Um, and that there actually are little bundles of pages that are sewn or glued in. It's not all one big block of paper. And so each one of those is called a signature. Don't ask me why it's called a signature and not a cluster or a bunch or a group or some other reasonable thing. But um, maybe it's your signature work. Anyway, so I had set aside this one to be the front signature. And now the very first page of a signature is usually sort of a cover, like a mini cover inside the cover. So I selected this one. And then I went with some writing pages. This is my upside down one, but I don't care. But now I do kind of, oh yeah, I don't have a choice because it's printed on the back of my thing and I don't want to go through. Now remember, I don't remember if I told you this. Let me let me look at my thing here because I've been going on. Okay. Print the pages from the kit that you want to use. Do not trim the white edges off. I've got all of the ones I've got. Here's one from another kit. She says confidently. Yeah. Okay, here's one from another kit. When you print the pages out, they have the um, white borders around them. I've already gone past that step, so don't look at mine and go, but yours are trimmed. Um, don't trim the edges off because what you're going to want to do, you'll notice this is printed on both sides. 
okay? In order to print it on both sides, unless your printer does that, which if it does, I'm very jealous, um, then you're going to have to print it and then put it back in the printer, this printed, the already printed side up, because when it prints, it goes in the printer this way and, the, and it prints here, okay? So then the, uh, that's why the printed side comes out on the top. So if you put the printed side in this way, then it's going to print on this side again, and you're going to have a double side come out. So you want to put it back in the second time with the printed side up and choose the pictures. Now, you're going to either have to say to yourself, I'm going to do three with this image on the back, and two with this image on the back and then just go for it or or you can say on the back of this picture I want this picture and on the back of this picture I want this picture and go through and do them one at a time it's totally up to you and you can do wh whichever way you like I believe that spider web is supposed to be in the upper corner I'm just guessing I mean I guess it could be in the bottom But I'm going to say I want it on the top. It's my book. I am making an executive decision. Now, you um, might, I need to trim that. You might want to leave this one on the right or the side ones on because we're going to fold them in half. Because the more pages you fold together, it's going to push the ones in the middle outward because of the thickness. All right. So you're going to have to trim a little bit, which I totally forgot about when I did mine. So do as I say and don't do as I do. So just trim the top and the bottom off. Then when we get to the, and, and print both sides, then trim the top and the bottom off. Then put them in the order that you want them. I have mine in, um, I, I have five pages and then um, two of our dyed pages that are in our list of things to do. Now I don't show how to dye the paper in this tutorial. Um, there's plenty of them online, uh, different people showing you different ways. I happen to use grape juice to do these and then I dried them in my dehydrator and it gave me these really cool kind of weird I don't know, marks and stuff on there and some of the fibers came through in parts of it. And I think it's because in the dehydrator you have to use a metal basket. But now that I've decided to only do two signatures, I'm going to, uh, while we're on the break so I can fix my mistakes, um, I'm going to go through and since I've only got one signature one, signature two, I'm gonna go through because I'd really rather not have the happy Halloween in here and um, scavenge some of the papers from the third signature that I'm not going to use and uh, remix and match my pages. All right, so I want you to get ready for that. So this is the steps I want you to do. I want you to put the extra piece of tape in and then paint it again. I want you to cut out your pictures for the inside and the outside covers and a spine if you want one and then uh, ink around the edges so they're not white, whatever color you want, black or, you know, whatever goes with the kit that you're using. Then I want you to print out your pages from your kit, leaving the edge all the way around. Then put them back through the printer and print them on the back side. Then trim the tops and the bottoms off, leaving the sides. Okay, and then if you want to put them in the order you want th to put them in, you can, you know. Um, I'm going to do mine, so you might as well do yours. And then that'll be the point where we pick up again. Okay, all right. Okay, we're back. Um, I've got my cover done. Do you have your cover done? Okay, if you followed your homework, you did. I did decide to go ahead and put a piece in the center on the inside and I'm glad that I did. Um, I think it looks cool. I'm having a little issue over here because um, 
I when I glued my uh, or taped my cover together I get it I guess it slid over a little bit at the bottom so um, I'm gonna have to try to stretch that a little bit or or something um, so that my book closes better but uh, I don't need it to close all the way anyway because the pages are going to be in there. So I think it's going to be fine. Um, it's only when I try to lay it flat like that and close it like that. So um, like I said, I think it's going to be fine. But just in case you have that trouble, um, know that it's because your um, edges slid too close to your spine when you were attaching them. All right. If you discover it before you uh, put your covers on your papers on you can actually just cut it apart move it apart and retape it over the top of your other tape and then paint it so that is a fix but I didn't realize it till I had all my papers on and I think I mentioned before we've had several several technical difficulties um, once Windows decided to update right in the middle of <laughs> my recording anyway woe is me so anyway I wanted to show you that make sure that um, that you saw that I inked the uh, edges and everything um, I'm not sure what's going on there I just now noticed it it looks like I'm gonna have to do some touch up there with a uh, magic marker it looks like uh, some of the cardboard of my layers may be pulled apart just a little bit just another day in the life of the book so now this is the cover and this is the cover on the inside I actually am really digging it so now we were talking about our signatures and what I've done here is um, I've done all of the bending and the putting them in order and putting the extra papers in and um, I'm going to show you in just a second the way that we're going to make sure that these fold. But I wanted to show you, let me make sure I'm under the camera right here. I wanted to show you how, because these papers are thicker, you see this. these can't go all the way in. I've pushed them, I've pushed them with the bone folder, I've done everything. And so now look how ragtag the end of my book is. Now it is a kind of a spooky book so I don't think it needs to be exactly even but having the one side of these pages plus I might have folded them crooked two of them does not matter I have to trim it I'm not very good at doing this so um, I actually want to show you how to put the pages together but I want to step away here and remember to get my cutting mat out because I always forget yes I do and I think this is my sharpest blade I'm not sure <laughs> which one I replaced the most recently anyway all right so to get your book at this stage or your signature at this stage get to break out the old scoreboard yeah, score anyway and I don't know how many of you have noticed this on camera or not, but I have written the scoreboard on here because every time I get on video, I can't remember what it's called. It's the silliest thing I know. So now you've got your pages, you've picked them out or you've printed them out and um, you've got your scruffy Halloween pages. Oh, I forgot to do the edges of these. Well, isn't that special? I had gone along just on the very edge of my ones in that signature and I just took them all at once and just kind of knocked it down a little bit with the green I'm not worried about the the dyed paper apparently I'm not able to hold on to anything today looks like a couple of these anyway I'll go back and do it I only worried about it on the top and the bottom all right because we're going to be trimming the edges so don't worry about it on the edges right now or the the right and the left all right so all right that's good for now <laughs> i was i got real quiet there because i realized i was leaning forward and i thought maybe um Maybe the girls were making an appearance. <laughs> 
anyway all right so this is my cover right and what I need to do because this paper is so heavy and I do really regret doing it on this heavy a paper I think I would have had a much easier time this would have folded so much easier um, if I had done one weight lighter in paper some people actually print this part out on um, 40 pound so that's totally up to you and uh, if you're in Europe uh, I'm so totally sorry I have a list over there on the other side of the room I have no idea now what the uh, GSM is equivalent to that um, so you're going to score it so that it folds easily and then you're going to sharpen that fold it's also called burnishing then you're going to open it back up and lay it down over here with my upside down pumpkins yes I know I could have taken that page out because because I switched up the pages see I think I might have done a couple of these crooked when I was scoring them and that's why I had that issue in that first um, signature see like look here this is going to stick out so I think when I originally cut or printed the pages um, that there was some sort of an issue going on and there should have been there should have been a paper in between these two I was doing every other one as a writing paper hmm okay maybe not and then with the writing paper I've just been folding them in half these don't have to be perfect They're, these are 8 by 10 and um, they don't come all the way all the way out so even though they're 8 by 10 so then that goes there I wish I had done some of these ahead of time probably would have been nice but anyway so you get the idea how that goes let's let's set this one to the side because I can finish that one off screen we've already got one that we can myrtleize by trying to cut it now I always almost always mess this up I'm just gonna be honest with you I'm not very good at doing this um, need to put my, my big bring out the big shiny ruler that I actually like better don't tell Mr. Penn that then my Mr. Pen ruler but it's so shiny on camera and you just go along with the blade and you don't have to murder everything you're not going to get through it on the first first try and just go through wow all right just go through a few times until you get them all cut off even did it work it worked <laughs> I almost said something I shouldn't say this front covers or this front one is just a little bit shorter um, and I think it's because it was just the shortest one let's just clip that now and be happy with it well that worked out rather well there ta-da that's how you do that <laughs> all right so now the reason the two signatures is going to work in this with the one inch spine I I kind of stuck this one in here and I thought oh well, maybe I should have gone with three you know one two but but 
remember we've got this notebook that we're going to stick in the middle. So that's going to be like a third signature. I knew there was a reason. So to make this is really, really easy. Set this to the side. I'm going to need it here in a minute when I do the other one off camera. To make this notebook, all you need is a cover, which is a two-sided two page. And I decided to use the same one because I really like it. Now this is not this is printed on 40 pounds, so it's much. Yeah, I know for sure these are 110. Then that's why it was so everything was so so hard. And so I really regret. Yours is going to turn out much nicer than mine. How do you like that? Wax on, wax off, and you too can become the master. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just goes to show how old I am, doesn't it? I'm not telling though. Really, really, I'm, I'm only 12. And um, look, that printed out with a white edge when I trimmed it. Now that I've folded it in half. You know, that could be the problem. Because look right there how much more that sticks out. This is why I normally have a script and go, or not a script, but a list. And I go by my list. Now let's see where we're at. Now it's still more. Now I wonder about my papers. Well, we'll just take the uh, razor blade to them. Since that worked out so well for us the first time. There we go. So you fold the paper in half. <laughs> and you do these as well. With these, it's much easier to uh, do it without getting too much of the center push. It's a little harder to line them up. Now, this is just regular typing paper. Um, the easiest way to do this is to get everything lined up and then just push your finger back to the center and make a crease. And then run your, your crease up and down. And then do it with your bone folder. Just like that. Okay. Now, all that's left is the crying. What I had done before was run a, a um, poked holes and then ran the elastic. But as you can see, the holes end up being crooked. When you lay it out flat, it's really hard to get them even. And then with this, it's pulling this apart. And look how much bigger the hole is than the elastic if you use a punch. So I have made an executive decision. And on this one, well, let me see if my executive decision will reach. So I forgot to get it ahead of time. And so, since this isn't very big, I'm going to show you how to staple it, even though your stapler won't reach. All right, so you're going to open your papers up, and you want the nice side of the staple on the outside. So let's... Get everything lined up and get our crease lined up. And then you're going to open it up. Yeah, this seems like it's less paper than the other one. But I can always, um, I might have could have done it on that, but because it's self-healing. But uh, you really need something soft. This is just a piece of foam from packing, some kind of a packing. I don't know what it was, but if you get one of these, save them because they're handy. And then you're just going to lay the stapler out flat and line the staple up with the seam. Let me move 
this over a bit. I'm hitting the paper cutter. And then just staple down. And you'll notice what I basically did was staple it to the foam. Line it up straight again. Staple down into the foam. Then carefully pull it up out of the foam. Flip it over. And fold it in and it's actually better and it works better if you do it with your finger believe it or not and not your thumbnail your thumbnail tends to bend it all goofy which it kind of did right there there we go I fixed it I keep I'm standing up. I stand up half the time. You guys don't know it. Um, that's kind of why it's harder to zoom in on my hands too. Because I'm standing here and not sitting. Alright. So now we've got that. And it's nice and neat and fine. And if you want to, you can take a Sharpie and try to cover your, your staples. And of course, you can always... Use your hole punch and punch holes or use your crocodile. I have a crocodile now. Um, but it makes the same size hole. In fact, it's a little bit bigger. It has a smaller one on it, um, which would probably work. But, uh, but this cord just isn't very big. And unless you're going to put an eyelid in, then, um, you know, there's no point. So... The reason I'm doing it this way, because I have a crocodile, and I was—that's why I told you you needed eyelets. Um, but I decided at the last minute that since it's so close to Halloween, that maybe a more expedient way of getting it done um, would be better. And um, I show you how to do um, uh, poke the holes and put the eyelets in in other videos. And there's a hundred of them out there that. People show you how to do it that way so I thought I would show you this way real quick and then all we have to do now is take a pause while I finish my other signature and uh, get it trimmed and then we'll sew them in the cover real quick and then we'll be done all right okay let's take a break <laughs> 